Welcome back, mortals, to Who You Are. This is a simple show where we get to know uh, who people are in the music industry. Today, I am joined by the transdimensional space lord of the lemons and pretty banging jazz pianist, Zane Neal. I scream into the void and the void responds with jazz. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? How you yeah, doing? Right? How are you? I th- well, we've had um, this conversation, but fuck man, how are um, you? I thought, I thought we were just like starting fresh and kicking it off again. But yeah, no, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. This is like, this has been like the happiest last month of my life. Oh, fuck so yeah. Far. I've fuck. been having a fucking great time. That's awesome to hear. Fuck. What, what have you been doing this last month? Um, so I kicked off my, um, I kicked off my Twitch stream, uh, one day, uh, one month and about four days, I think roughly ago. Um, so I'm real fresh to it. Like real, real fresh. Nice. Um, but yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, the goal of this podcast is basically getting to know how people got into music and stuff. So jumping right into it how, how did you get started into music how's it begin um so are you so you do want to know from like square one like or, wherever or you want to start what's the most significant point for you um oh shit man i think i was in like very late kindergarten or something i was maybe like six years old and i didn't really like know that much like what even what what a piano even really was but i was just like yo i want piano lessons i want to be a musician and my parents were like yeah all right so they got me piano lessons and then here i am <laughs> <laughs> short and sweet <laughs> fuck yeah pretty um, much yeah yeah so did you ever find it a struggle to kind of stick with music or is it just like you've always had the passion and it's just part of you yeah no look i um so oh shit whoops um i'm so i'm 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 asperger's as fuck man like really really asperger's and um from what i know about or from what i i know of about that stuff it's like it's a pretty common trait to sort of become a little bit like uh obsessed with one thing and then just kind of stick with it so um like i was i think like i knew what i wanted to do for my uni degree when i was like 10 years old you know um like there, there was never any question about it for me um I, like i've been sticking to my guns since i was like yeah about six years old so nothing's really changed um yeah and then the hard part after that was just consciously being forced to waste like 12 years of my life or something in the australian education system while i've like you you know yeah no and like me and you've been to the same uni and had to deal with all that shit too <laughs> And yeah then, oh dude uni's a whole nother ball game as well yeah well tell us tell us a bit about uni so you went from dealing with 12 years of shitty schooling and then into uni what what was that like coming from school to uni um really like kind of strange because it's like i think about it in uh in, in two different mindsets one is like what it was like at the time and then there's the 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 like the lens that I look back on it through, um, which are two insanely different things. Um, but going going from uh going from high school into university, like I got accepted into my uni degree at the con, like halfway through year twelve or a bit before halfway through year twelve. Like yeah. I, I swear I was probably like I can't remember like maybe four months or something, three months into year twelve, and then I went and auditioned for the top con, got in, and then was like. I, I, like I've already, I've already been accepted into my uni degree. So like, what, what's, what's the point of all of this? Like, why am I here? Um, yeah. And getting it like high school is shit because well, for a lot of people, high school is really shit because it's like, there's, there's not like a, a large social pool in high school, depending on which high school you'd go to. But, um, it's like, you know, you, you have to be there and spend your time with like, with, with the people that are available for so for like so much of a large part of your life whereas you get to you and so many of them just aren't like-minded you know what i mean i think that was the biggest thing was like going to university and being surrounded by other people that also wanted to do pretty much the same stuff as me which was just sort of um like it was exciting in so far it was almost overwhelming like i think i was just bouncing off the walls for like all of first year out of pure excitement 
Um, you know, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's 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 the response I get from most people is like, "Oh, don't worry, I remember what you were like in, in university." No, but like, I think everyone's like that when you come to uni and you find like, "Oh shit," people who actually know what I'm talking about. Um, so developing those friendships and getting into the music industry, how how have you found being in uni and doing music and then also coming out of uni and trying to continue to do that music? Fucking horrible. <laughs> it's probably not it's probably not the answer you expected, hey. Um like I the music industry is completely reliant on your ability to network. You know what I mean? Like yeah. networking is networking is just everything. Um so um and 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 what I didn't realize that networking meant um back in university i was that like a large part of it is like you you got to go out and drink with people you know what i mean you got to go to the pub you got to go and like have beers and stuff you got to go to you got to go to parties and whatnot you got especially have to go to other people's gigs um and show support for your peers um and 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 i i didn't really do that like i spent pretty much most of my degree playing skyrim honestly <laughs> um I, I'm not even kidding. Like I, I love performance and it's um, been a hard, it's been a long road for me to learn to like equ equate that, like loving being the center of attention and being on stage doesn't mean that I don't have a whole lot of introverted qualities. I don't really like going outside. I don't really like going to parties. Um, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, pref I like, I want to, I just want to like, like I am the dude that would happily go and live up on a mountaintop for 40 years and never speak to anyone and just do his own thing. You that's know what I mean? Mood, yeah. Um, and so that, 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 but that's a really like kind of a rough, like that's a rough way to live and also want to be part of the music industry because you, you can't be part of something that you're not present for. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of, I spent way too much time expecting things to just sort of come to me before I realized that that's just not how it works, you know? And I think, a lot of my early, uh, a lot of for my early life in the music industry, I think a lot of my relationships suffered for that. Yeah, no, I can personally, I can relate to that just because you come to a point after all this sitting around that, oh, I gotta actually put in the effort, which is hard. Um, I relate to you being the Asperger's thing, uh, and you, I think you've also been quite open about this kind of stuff. Um, does that do you think that plays into how you interact with everyone and the struggle? Um yeah, I mean honestly like my 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 journey with the whole like uh being on the being on the spectrum kind of thing. Um I like it just comes down to like I had to learn social like social etiquette and social rules um very consciously like by rote you know and i was blessed with really really damn good parents like i could spend the rest of the entire podcast explaining just exactly how my parents were just absolutely amazing you know like they were kind compassionate and caring but they were also really honest with me you know what i mean when they saw me making like social mistakes and errors they would like sit me down and explain to me what i was doing wrong why it, it was wrong and I would often be like, you know, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Why can't other humans just be logical like me? Um, or, or, you know what I mean? Um, like it was this very sort of, I lived in my own head and it was very, it's been a very long journey for me to sort of um, see outside myself. Um, but I, I feel like I'm really like, I've, I've made a lot of, a, head, a lot of headway with, with developing that. Um, and I think that that has been something that's benefited me uh, in, infinitely in my adult life, you know? Yeah. So I've still got all that, like that weird quirkiness and whatnot. But when I have to, I feel confident that I can um, filter it in a way that doesn't alienate the people around me now. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, oof. I got to process that. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> no you're right i am hit, um, asking these questions for a reason but no that's awesome to hear i can again i can relate to that kind of way of thinking too um just while we're on the topic i like would like to touch on 
being neurodiverse in music because I feel like a lot of people can relate to your situation having to essentially learn these social skills um, and just um, be able to adapt. Uh, do you have any advice or any thoughts for people who might be in the same boat as you and struggling to get their head around um, doing this kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, for like fair warning, like all of the advice I have is advice that I would give myself. Um, in in so far as it like this is this is stuff that I feel has worked for me, but that like I also it, it's 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 an acceptable fact that you know um, people are different, and what works for me won't necessarily work for other people. So this is this is not biblical in any sense, but um, I mean. To put it in a shock factor way, beat the shit out of yourself on a regular basis. Um, like, um, it's it's a it's a dangerous thing because it can it can spiral out of control and lead to some nasty stuff. But like, generally speaking, I try to be quite harsh on myself when I when I um, introspect or or uh, reflect on how I interact with people and how. Um, I identify how my behavior affects the people around me. And that can be from, from affecting them quite positively to affecting them quite negatively, you know? Um, and, and it's about that, that constant reevaluation of, of your own behavior and identifying how it affects people that can lead you to eventually, um, you don't have to think about it as consciously all the time. You know what I mean? The eventually, like it's, it's just practice, you know, like ev eventually you'll start interacting with people and things will click and you'll start building longer, longer term relationships. You won't burn your relationships out as fast. Um, they'll last longer. Um, and, and it's crazy because so much of it can just come back down to simple rules. Like um, ask people more questions about themselves. You know what I mean? Um, be a better listener um, and, and engage with like something that I really like to do is cause like no, no one's, no one's an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, even like people sometimes put themselves in the wrong field where they're not necess they don't necessarily have like the most natural aptitude for, um, and that happens a lot. And then other people will look at them and go, oh, you know, this person's not too bright, but, but that person, you know, if you get to know them, like, heck, there, there, there could be something like really, really like worth that there, there almost always is something really, really worthwhile about them that is just, um, you know, I don't know, for example, they could be like an amazing carpenter that just really wants to do law for some reason. It's like, you know, they might be really struggling in law and their peers might be like, man, yeah, that dude kind of isn't great with law or whatever. But, you know, you sit down and talk to them, ask some questions about themselves and you find out that they're like making these beautiful like pieces of carved artwork and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but, but the example, but, but yeah. No, that. <laughs> I feel like that is good advice, learning those habits and kind of putting yourself in situations where you might not be comfortable in Open developing those people, skills. Yeah. yeah, I think that is important. And especially being creatives, there are a lot of people in that kind of, who come under this umbrella of neurodiverse and stuff who struggle with bits and pieces with social things. So I think mm. it's important to hear this kind of stuff. Uh, I guess going a bit back, you mentioned you were streaming. Tell us a bit more about that. I believe it's your handles, Mountain Goat sixty nine. Uh, yep. first, how did that handle come about? Mountain underscore Goat sixty nine is a handle I made in high school. Um, I never expected to stream with this account. Uh, I named my Snapchat account in high school the same thing. Um, and so I just kind of like transferred, you know, Snapchat to Twitch and, um, yeah. And I don't know, it was there. I did a few streams with it and then things kind of like took off a little bit and, and now I'm still here under the same bloody name of mountain goat, mountain underscore goat 69. It's, it's like, you know, so the people have one of two reactions to it. They're either like, so when are you going to change it? Yeah. <laughs> or or that being said, um, like a really, really lovely um, dude by the name of uh, on Twitch called Wilnuf. Shout out to him, by the way. I, I could do so many Twitch shout outs for people that have just done 
um, like really amazing things to help me on this platform. Um, big one has to go to go to someone called Ms. Rocks 69. Like That's the 69 awesome. literally, the 69 literally netted me like a small community of other people with 69 at the end of their name who are just like, oh, this, this dude has like same thing as us. And like, they, they just gravitated towards it. Um, when Wilnuth discovered me and, sh- and, and, and kind of like featured me on his channel and, um, and got my name, he was like, yeah, mountain goats, mountain underscore goats. And he just burst out laughing and he was like, the 69 is amazing. I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's just one of those things that you have to accept that some people will find it a little bit alienating or be like, you know, uh, whatever, or, and other people will be like, oh, that's hilarious. Like you're a 25 year old dude who has got like one of the most immature like things in you you know what i mean it's that yeah it's 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 quite ironic and in, in from from a lot of different perspectives it and i feel like it's jumping into a lot of people on the internet and that kind of humor personally i find it fucking hilarious and i love it um hey. so how have you found streaming you mentioned you found like this community and how's it been getting started on this platform um I spent on like the first maybe uh, I don't know like I've I've had like I had a few streams especially at the uh, earlier towards like the beginning of it all where I was kind of just chilling out um, my both my my two housemates are my um my moderators for my chat and um they they they'd just like kind of you know hop on the stream and it'd be like me and them literally just three people in total including me and I'd just like write beats and tunes and stuff and chill out and then um entertain whatever you know random people happened to cross it when they did come in and kind of like flick the switch and you know it would go from just like me trying to make a beat quietly to just like i am lemon all this you know what i mean all the like the high energy stuff yeah um which which now that things are kind of a bit more um now that things are kind of starting to really flow with the stream i almost sometimes miss those quiet nights (laughs) Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where there was just no one watching except like my two housemates. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 that being said, I, like, I love the direction that the stream is going and like the, the more the merrier, you know what I mean? I'm so thankful for all the people that do kind of regularly come back and, and uh, engage with what I do because it just gives so much meaning to my life, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, yeah, sorry. So getting, getting started can be a bit of a long road, but like once you start getting that audience, Mm, man it's it's worth it you know what i mean like i worked hard for this i've streamed like 70 hours in one month oh fuck um yeah and 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 the the requirement to get affiliated on twitch uh for you have to stream more than 25 hours in one month so i've knocked that one well out of the ballpark yeah no you've done pretty well (laughs) damn yeah no that's awesome um so I've also seen a lot of musicians and even just creators in general turning to streaming with the current climate and the world being a bit shit and everyone having to be close inside. Uh, I guess you've performed live and you're now you're streaming. How, how does that differ? Um, do you get the same kind of feeling from it or is it like a whole different thing? Mm, That's a good question. Cause all through university, I, f- I spent so much time fantasizing about having like a wildly successful YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Like somewhere where I could just be insane, be myself. And, 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 and the people that did find that um, worthwhile would just gravitate towards, towards it, you know? But um, YouTube just doesn't work for me, man. Like I'm a performer by nature. And, and the th- like one of the things that I've had the most fun about performance with um, is particularly just being on stage and emceeing gigs, um, mm. being able to like talk to, you know, a, a, like, a, like a hall or a room full of people or whatever um, and, and crack jokes on the fly and then sort of make note of what people as like what the room, because ro- you've got each individual person, but the room itself is also a person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, and so if you, you know, you crack a joke and, and, and no one responds to it, you file that in the back of your head. You're like, okay, so that, that, that brand of humor doesn't connect with these people. So you try something else, throw it in there, dip that toe in the water. And then, you know, you'll get like pretty much everyone will like have a good chuckle at it. And then you can sort of make note of that one and be like, okay, so the room in general, like 
this is what people like, this is what this collection of people likes. And you get a different collection of people every time that you can kind of, um, uh, you know, like test the waters with to find like what engages them. Um, and you can't do that on YouTube. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Or at least not, not in a real time sense. Whereas with Twitch, um, it, you, you have that, you have that live experience where you can do something. And then if you see a chat flood with like, you know, a bunch of people like typing laughter or whatever, or like spamming like emotes of, you know, fire emojis or whatever, like you can tell what, what, what the room again is into. Yeah. Um, so that, that I gravitate really heavily towards that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it seems like a decent enough alternative or alternative to live performance, I guess, at least for someone like you, it's it, not a lot of people know what Twitch is actually. Do you want to explain real quick what that is? Um, Twitch is primarily a website where people um, live stream themselves playing video games. Um, and we'll do a plethora of different things. They'll, you know, commentate on the video game or like engage with their, with there's like a chat bar on the right hand side of, um, of the thing. And they'll engage with their, their audience and chat while they play the video game. Um, but there's like a really, there's, there's actually like genuinely a flourishing community of artists and stuff on Twitch, um, under everything from like, you've got the music category where, um, there's a whole lot of, uh, radio channels that just play like lo-fi, uh, you know, 24, seven beats to relax slash study and chill to, um, yeah. And then you've got like people that are, you know, actually making content, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like yourself, like playing their instruments and stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, that's the kind of the main reaction I get a lot of the time from people is like, oh, Twitch is a gaming website though. So yeah. what are you doing on there? And it's like, no, nah, there's, there's, there's like, I, I mean, I regularly see like 17,000 people on the music category alone. That's an audience of 17,000 people. There's a lot of different streams to spread that number over, hmm. but, um, but it's all kind of more focused towards the top end of stuff. So if you can get up into that, if you can work your way up the ladder to that point, then, you know, that's, that's, that's a decent number of people to have access to, you know, and like then social media. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And plenty of artists use like the just chatting category, which has taken off as well. There's like 170,000 people on that or something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people it's like, want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. The, the audience is there. Um, I, so Twitch is Twitch is definitely a really good um a really good avenue for musicians and artists to kind of share what they do. Definitely, I definitely think so. Especially Flying Lotus, actually, the brand, their label, Brain Feeder, is now doing Twitch stuff too. You're so kidding? No. Really? So I like to all those people who say, "Oh, that's just for games." Uh, you got Flylo on there, so. I think that's a lie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, that is so. I've got to check that out. That's insane. Brain feeder, I think it's called. So brain feeder. I'm yeah. Gonna, thanks, thanks, man. I'm 100% gonna go and scope that out because that sounds awesome. No worries. I think Genevieve from um, Noah did a gig a couple days ago or something. So if you like Noah and Genevieve and stuff, so. Oh yeah, they're yeah. hardcore, man. They're they're serious. They're legit. Yeah. They're, they're pretty <laughs> dope. No, fuck. Yeah, so if fucking Flylo's on, it means everyone's got to jump on it now. Let's pretty watch much, it get yeah. flooded like TikTok. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I guess also a lot of what you're doing with Twitch is fighting an algorithm. It's a, This might be a bit of an obscure topic, but with music today and being online, you've got to battle for people's attention almost. Uh how do you find that? Mm, no, 100%. Um, like Twitch is a really interesting medium to use because uh, I mean, most uh, professional streamers who are like doing it at full time, um, you know, they'll be streaming for like six to eight hours a day or something. Um, obviously the lifespan on a single stream in a day is a bit shorter for, um, for a lot of like more music based stuff because you know, um, like I, it just, it's, it's straight up easier to play a game for like eight hours than it is to play music for eight straight hours. Yeah. Um, but because, be, because I mean, my streams average out about two, about two and a half hours to three hours, I think. 
um, or at least two to three hours. Um, and so when you, when you like, not a lot of people are going to be there for that whole ride, you know, like you'll get people come in, you get like fluctuation in like numbers and engagement and stuff. You'll get people come in, dip back out, come in again later and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's not like YouTube where you, you make 10 minutes of, of concentrated content, upload that online and then, and then people engage with that in their own time. It's like, um, with Twitch, it's, it's a much, you, you're playing a long game there. Um, and so you've got to learn how to in, be engaging for that whole three hours so that when people do come in, no matter what point they jump in on the stream at, um, there's instantly something there that can like grab their attention and keep them there for a bit. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I don't expect people to be at the stream for, for the entirety of the stream. Um, like often you'll get people drop in for like 10 to 30 minutes or something or maybe yeah. even an hour or two um, sometimes. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it, yeah. It's, it's just a bit easier than, I guess, fighting for likes on YouTube with Twitch. So it's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the, the competition for YouTube as well is like extreme. Like YouTube is just such an oversaturated market at the moment. So unless you have something that genuinely just grabs people, um, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be like pretty phenomenal with your content on YouTube. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, like take, take that with a grain of salt, man. Like my YouTube has like 50 subscribers on it and I've uploaded like, uh, you know, a smattering of, um, uh, eclectic videos of, of different natures and stuff, you know, like I'm, I'm really no expert on, on how things work on that platform. No, that's fair. That's, uh, the whole social media stuff is different depending on where you go i guess um yeah. i guess real quick well you do a lot of music you've released an album you've done you're doing live stream on twitch you essentially write songs on the fly i guess how do you go about writing a song on a normal day is it just you go nuts and see what comes out or so my, my process for writing outside of, of, of kind of, you know, public online performance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I'm, I'm just going to give you like the, the, the complete honest example and answer. So, um, I, either I'll be like jamming one way is I like jam out on my keyboard and we'll just mess around, do whatever comes pops into my head. It could be anything from, I find like a synthesizer that gives me a, a, a particular feeling. And then I'll look for a kind of a riff or a, some kind of melody or progression that will kind of suit will will kind of, um, you know what I mean? Go with what I'm trying to achieve with that particular sound. I could just be like, um, screwing around with a Rhodes patch and just find a chord progression that's really tasty or a melody that's really nice. Um, or a lot of the time, what also happens is, um, I'll be trying to have like a shower, um, because my armpits smell like Chernobyl <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, like it just, I hate, I hate the shower. I hate when stuff comes to you in the shower. It's really, really frustrating. Cause it's like, you know, you don't have all of your gear there to just, to, you know, maybe like some kind of waterproof shower keyboard with like a little record button on it would be something that a lot of people would buy, you know? Um, just oh, so if you are shit. actually, can you just cut that bit out of the podcast? I don't want people <laughs> stealing my business ideas. Uh, um, well, this goes out in another two months. So you got time to patent it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Um, but yeah, I was in the shower, like I think no last night and the day before or something. And I had this idea for this um, track and it was, it, it just really took me and, um, and I didn't want to forget it. And so I did what I think, um, virtual riot does it a lot from memory. Um, you just kind of vocalize, you know, your breakdown or your, whatever it is that you're trying to remember. And then you recreate that later on your instrument or your computer. And so then I've got this, oh, wait, uh, <laughs> that's 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 my uh that's my uh that's my writing process <laughs> sometimes it's just like these unhinged sound bites of just me vocal like 
Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool to hear. Like, I think a lot of people get overcomplicated with writing music and it's really just a simple fucking thing. You just pick out an idea and expand it sometimes. Sometimes it can be complicated, but yeah. It really can. No joke, though. Um, This is... So I wrote it up. um, I wrote it up yesterday. Hmm. And uh, depending on whether or not the instrument sets saved correctly, uh, this is this is what it sounds like. Oh no, they didn't. Never mind. Oh damn, bugger! I'll send you. I'll send you the thing, and then that that can be where you play it. Um, It's it's a real it's like a really nice little synth wave riff that I wrote. Uh, you're making my job harder by having to edit this now. <laughs> uh, no, well, I'm here. I'm I'm here to challenge you and, and help you grow. You know what I mean? That's oh. what I do for people. Thanks, I, uh, man. I help them grow, man. Thanks. Yeah, I grew a beard though, and you didn't. So, <sighs> <laughs> I'm working on it. My 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 goal is to eventually kind of do the whole Viking aesthetic. You know what I mean? Like the oh, beard. I could dig that. I, my my aesthetic goal is pretty much to look like Rollo Lockbrook from um from Vikings. Vikings. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically I just need a beard and a gym membership. <laughs> oh you quarantine so you can do the beard. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah. Well, I think I think that's a good place to finish off. Uh I guess to tie everything off, can we expect anything from Mountain Goat in the near future? Um so I've started um I've started writing like uh kind of like theme songs and stuff for other people's Twitch streams. Um so I'll probably upload those to YouTube, but at the moment I'm pretty much entirely focusing on Twitch. Like my content output for other platforms is pretty not there at the moment. Um which is fine like if I try and overload my plate with too many things, I'm just going to crumble. I'm one of those people, you know what I mean? I got yeah. my life in order a month ago um and 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 fixed up a lot of really nasty bad habits um and kind of after hitting what i would say is probably my lowest point (laughs) turned it all around and was like i'm gonna stream and stop wasting my life away and here i am so if anyone else is out there and like struggling with really really poor life choices um i heavily recommend just like uh spitting the dummy essentially (laughs) (laughs) No, that's a different vibe. Oh shit! Now I kind of want to get into that, but maybe that's another. You should do it, man. There's there there are there, there's Twitch stream podcasts like are totally a thing. You should definitely do it. Oh yeah, that's we'll jump on that at some point. A whole lot of logistics to figure out before we get that far. But no, that's true. well, I guess I'll just yeah, we'll leave it there. And we can oh, yeah, man. get into shit there. Um, everyone, check out uh, Mountain. Uh, what was it again? What's your Twitch Mountain hand? underscore Goat sixty nine. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's Twitch. what you want to check out on Twitch dot com. No, Twitch dot TV. Uh, yeah, head on over, have a good squiz, and we'll probably chat to Zane sometime in the future because it's been fucking fucking dope. So Hell thanks yeah. for joining Always us. Always happy man. to come back, man. Fuck yeah. All right. Bye, guys.